Good morning and welcome to the Unitarian Universalist congregation at Shelter Rock on this gorgeous homecoming Sunday. Who is responsible for weather? Hands shoot up. Yes, thank you. Yes, excellent. Our commendations to all of you. I'm the Reverend Ned White, the interim senior minister here at the congregation, serving with Reverend Jennifer Brower and Reverend Dr. Natalie Fenimore, who are also here on the chancel with me. We welcome you to this new congregational year. I want to begin by acknowledging that we're in the midst of the Jewish High Holy Days between Rosh Hashanah, that was last Sunday, and Yom Kippur, that is coming up this Tuesday. And I will have more to say about that uh, at next week's service. We'll also have some special music then. Please join us after this service for our annual intergenerational homecoming picnic. Uh, wristbands for lunch are available for purchase in the lobby. And if you are a first time visitor, uh, please know that you are, will be our guest today and it will not cost you a thing. On Thursday evening of this week at 7.30, we will have a special Shelter Rock Forum presentation with Robert Jones, who is a beach grantee through the Public Religion Research Institute. His talk is entitled, How Did This Happen? The State of American Democracy Today. It's a really critically important issue that's consistent with our fifth principle. And we will be focusing on how different groups are dealing with the demographic change that is happening in America at, at this time. There are, in your order of service, a number of ways that you can act out your commitment to expanding justice on Long Island and in New York, New York and the nation and the world. So please uh, consult that. Congratulations are in order for uh, Captain Hugh M. Stevens, who is 94 years old and just graduated college with a Bachelor of Science in Interdisciplinary Studies. He'll receive his degree in January. Is, is he here in the hall uh, to this morning? If, yes, there he is. Over, so if, when you see him, commend him. Congratulations. It's great. It is now my uh, honor and privilege uh, to make a special presentation. Earlier this year, our Minister of Lifespan Religious Education, the Reverend Natalie Fenimore, received her doctorate in ministry from Wesley Theological Seminary in Washington, DC. As any of you uh, who have been to school, how many of you have ever been to school? As you know, this was a significant achievement, or a monumental achievement, uh, the culmination of many years of hard work. Members of our Caring Hearts Quilters here at UUCSR wanted to honor this achievement. I invite them forward, as well as the Reverend Dr. Natalie Fenneman, Fen Fenimore forward for the pre presentation of a congratulatory gift. So uh, move to the center where everybody can see you would be good. Th this way, yes, away from the, yes. And um, the quilters have created out. So in the Roman Catholic tradition, uh, people genuflect for various reasons. In our tradition, you can genuflect when you see N the Reverend Dr. Natalie Fenimore. Uh, in this wonderful festive spirit, let us now greet one another uh, festively as part of our service.
Before I share with you our opening words, I understand that a creature in the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part, which is in the parking lot in a car, is barking furiously and would like its human friend to come back and, and maybe let it out of the car. So we have a, a dog who is unhappy in the car outside. I share with you these opening words, the words of Denise Levertov. Intricate and untraceable, weaving and interweaving, dark strands with light, designed beyond all spidery contrivance to link, not to entrap. Elation, grief, joy, contrition, entwined, shaking, changing, forever forming, transforming, all praise, all praise to the great web. In recognition and appreciation of our 73 religious education volunteers, I invite our newest RE teachers to light our chalice this morning. Will Dominic Adnolfi, Faye Babel, Neha Michelson, Andrea Starr, Judy Wiley Rosette please come forward? And joining them will be our new religious education coordinator, Carson Jones. <laughs> will everyone join in reciting the chalice lighting words in your order of service? We light this chalice, the symbol of Trinitarian Universalism. This is a faith of the open mind. This is a faith of the loving heart. This is a faith of the helping hands. Together we care for our earth and work for peace and friendship in our world. Please rise in body or spirit as you're willing and able to sing hymn number 1064, Blue Boat Home in the Teal Hymnal.
Please remain standing as we join in our words and song of affirmation, which are both printed in the order of service and will be projected here on the screen. Our words of affirmation, please join me in saying, love is the doctrine of this congregation, the quest of truth is its sacrament, and service is its prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge in freedom, to serve human need, this to be affirm and covenant with each other. So I start this morning with a question. How many of you like spiders? Oh good, good, we have some spider friends here. This is great. Whatever else you might say about spiders, they're experts at weaving webs. I live in a very old house and there are lots of very old and talented spiders that live in my house and they do great work. Now why do I bring up spiders this morning? Because Actually, we've all got something in common with them. We're all web weavers. Let us explain. To start, I want you to raise your hand or cross your eyes or wiggle your ears or whatever you need to do to answer these questions. Who's here for the first time today? Yay. Who's been coming to this congregation for less than a year? Right, right, right. Okay. For five years or less? For 10 years? For 20 years? For 30 years? For 40 years? I uh, know where to look, right? right? For more than 40 years. You need to stand for this one. <laughs> okay. Who belongs to an RE class? Please stand. Come on. Hey. Hey, hey. All right. All right. All right. Who's an RE teacher? Who's on the RE committee? Who serves on the board of trustees of this congregation? Stand, yeah. Who serves on the beach board or the housing board? Who chairs a committee? Who belongs to a committee? Lots of hands. Who usually has lunch at UU Cafe? Yum. Who will enjoy today's homecoming picnic? <laughs> Who has ever attended a class or a discussion at the congregation? Who has ever come to hear a speaker at Shelter Rock Forum, such as you're going to do on Thursday? Who cooks food for the inn? Great. And who has ever signed a Social Justice Committee petition? Awesome. Who here has ever been on the Caring Committee? Oh, come on, I know you're here, I can see you. <laughs> and who's helped out by cooking food or visiting with someone or sending a card or making a call? Mm -hmm. Who has been a part of our small group ministry? 
and who's attended the peace service in the chapel on the last Sunday of each month. Now you know about it, you'll need to attend. <laughs> Who has been part of our Soulful Sundown services on the second Fridays? <laughs> Who has brought bread to the annual Thanksgiving service? Who will be bringing gluten-free bread to the annual <laughs> Thanksgiving service? <laughs> Who has brought a pet or a picture of a pet to a blessing of the animals? And who has come on a Christmas Eve? So you can see that there are lots of ways to be connected to this congregation. Worship services, classes, picnics, concerts, lots of ways that we depend on one another to help make things happen. Ministers, leaders, teachers, staff, kids, we all are connected. There is a web that we are related to a way that we are related to one another in this congregation. And it's complicated, but so simple. If you think about us as a point on a web of relationship, there are so many strands. Out of all these differences, we are weaving a web of interconnection that is Unitarian Universalism and the Unitarian Universalist congregation at Shelter Rock. While our web includes the building and the beautiful grounds, when we refer to our web, we mostly mean the community, the congregation, the people who have congregated, the people who have come together, just as we have today, to share the experience of being alive. There are two questions that we're going to be working on all year. The first one is, what keeps us together? If we think of ourselves as if we are, in fact, connected to one another by some invisible strand, what's that strand made of? And, and the second question is, what's the web for? A spider weaves a web to make a home and to catch food. Why do we weave a web with one another? What's our UUCSR web relationship for? Planting this seed now, we will follow up when we come to another intergenerational service, when we are here again later this year. So for now, happy weaving, everyone. And now let's join in singing our children and their teachers out to their classrooms. Stephen, it's you. <laughs> Stephen was rising up like the phoenix from the fire.
We will now take an offering for the life and, this, and work of this congregation, for the ways in which we embrace Unitarian Universalist principles and values and try to move them out into the world. Your generous offering will be freely given and gratefully received. Will the ushers please come forward? Dave, you aren't such bad web weavers yourselves, you know. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Our reading words of David Bumbaugh. The seventh principle calls us to reverence before the world. Not some future world, but the miraculous world of our everyday experience. It challenges us to understand the world as reflexive and relational rather than hierarchical. It bespeaks a world where neither God nor humanity is at the center. It bespeaks a world where, because all things impinge on all other, everything matters. It challenges us to take responsibility for the whole and all parts of the whole, since in the interdependent world, every decision, every relationship, has significance for every other decision and relationship. It calls us to trust the creative, evolving, redeeming process that brings us into being, that sustains our being, that transforms our being. It offers a vision of a world where the sacred is incarnated in every moment, in every aspect of being, a world where God is always fully present and always fully at risk. As we begin this new congregational year, I invite you to come forward to light candles of joy and sorrow, of celebration and concern, marking whatever is in your heart.
invite you into a time of shared meditation. I invite you to take a deep breath and to relax into this space. As many have come home to their religious community this Sunday, Others have come today seeking a new congregation or are tentatively seeking a spiritual home for the very first time. May ours be a house of warm hospitality for each person who crosses our threshold this and every day. May all who enter here feel welcome and acknowledged warmly received and encouraged. Let us join now in turning our attention and energies to the candles that symbolize what's held in our hearts. Those candle boxes are so full, so full of so much more than we can possibly know so much more than we can articulate and share with each other. But we know that there are yearnings and hopes, there are sorrows and fears, and we give thanks that there are candles lit for precious events for which we are grateful and which bring us joy. By all of these, we are humbled. At this hour, may we feel held in the care and sanctity of this community and space. May we be reminded that this house has been a haven to people of all ages. Here, generations of people have held in their hearts and minds the worries and hopes they have for our world, just as we do today. Within these walls, hearts and minds have been opened to fresh insights. Meaning has been found. Friendships have grown up. Couples have been joined. Children have been welcomed and blessed, and the lives of fellow congregants and our loved ones have been memorialized. As we begin a fresh chapter in our congregation's Book of Life, May we commit to actualizing our greatest hopes and prayers for this community we share. May we do our part in building an open and affirming and welcoming community for all. May we create sacred space where life's deeper meanings can be discerned and shared. And may there be plenty of kindness and good humor and forgiveness for when we stumble. For stumble, we will. We have gathered on this bright, beautiful September morning in expectation and hope. In expectation and hope that the blessings of this new year will outnumber the challenges. And that our coming together will sustain us through all things. May it be so. May we be such a blessing for each other. Amen.
human beings are born small and fragile and helpless in many ways, our humanness is therefore begun in need. As infants and children, we need another to feed us, to keep us warm and safe and comforted. We need another to give us love and understanding. As elders, we move again toward this obvious need for caregiving, but in reality, all our lives, we are dependent on others to help us to learn and grow, to keep us safe and warm. We are lifelong learners as well. Our minds, our ears, our eyes, our hearts, and our very souls open to the knowledge and wisdom that we find in the company of others. Our interdependence is central, a central part of our lives and our living. Grandparents teaching parents, parents teaching children, each generation touching the next. Each person passing along a story and that story being taken up by all in the community to make the community's story, a story that becomes part of all of us. As Antoine de Experi, the author of The Little Prince, writes in Generation to Generation, in a house that becomes a home, one hands down and another takes up the heritage of mind and heart, laughter and tears, musings and deeds, love like a carefully loaded ship crosses the gulf between generations. Let us build up memories in our children, lest they drag out joyless lives, lest they allow treasures to be lost because they have not been given the keys. We live not by things, but by the meanings of things. It is needful to transmit the passwords from generation to generation. In the interconnected web that is this, our congregation, all our ages are connected over all our lifetimes and beyond. We learn together. We teach each other, and while UUCSR offers classes and courses and discussion groups for adults and a full religious education program for children and youth, for infants through high school graduation, it is really by example and experience that most of our learning is done together. We come together in all our glorious diversity and are held together by opening ourselves to what we gain when we ask questions and look for answers in a caring community, something we can't gain alone. In this congregation, we move together in ways that demonstrate disconnectedness. We play together, we teach together, we learn together. We have experience of knowing, knowing that we are better together. Together when we're under the Lunar New Year dragon, together as a youth group on a service trip, together at UU Cafe, together at Hadley House, together at our coming of age class when they present their belief statements. Together, when we dedicate our children, together, when we care for the lonely, when we care for those in pain, we bring a meal to someone who's just a little too tired from chemo to cook for themselves. Our connectedness is shown in the ways that we experience this congregation as a home, a home for all ages and stages. How does our web of connection, how does our connectedness as a place of lifelong learning, of deeply held lifespan faith development, how does this continue to touch you?
It recently occurred to me that this homecoming Sunday marks 25 years since the longtime members of our congregation and those who are no longer with us marched from our former home on Plandome Road down Shelter Rock and into this, the building that has become the religious home that many members of the Unitarian Universalist congregation at Shelter Rock have ever known. 25 years. This revelation influenced my thinking about our interdependence on this homecoming Sunday. As we are thinking about the web that connects us one to the other, I am particularly sensitive to our place in time, our location on that web. I am thinking about how the web has developed since the founding of our congregation how it's extended through the different buildings and has been enhanced by all of the people who have ever been members of the congregation, by all of the children who have ever come of age in our congregation's religious education program, and all of the decisions that we have ever made as a religious body. I'm thinking about what we each contribute to the web's design and to its sturdiness and the purpose and function of the web. With the passing of time, the mooring strands of the web have grown more numerous and longer. They reach farther and farther and are anchored to more posts. The framework of the web has widened with each member's search for meaning and truth and self-expression. And there are more viscid threads, you know, the sticky ones that run connecting one to the other. There are more viscid threads connecting us to each other. They fashion a more elaborate and very detailed center. Our ever-spun web is a symbol of our deep need for connection and our desire to reach farther and farther out into the world, to be in relationship with more people, to extend our witness to others far, far away, to stretch across the wide gulfs to connect with each other across different views and deeply held convictions, and to stretch to touch the numinous. And while the web we together weave grows and expands with time, the work that goes into it, the spiritual work of cultivating a Unitarian Universalist religious life, remains unchanged over the decades. On Friday night, I spoke of our work as people of faith. Our work is threefold. In our gathering as a religious community, as people of Unitarian Universalist faith, we, we reach within through all that's held within our interior life, our memories, our experiences of suffering, as well as our moments of joy and glorious epiphanies, in order to find that which resides at our very center, that which points us toward and reflects our truest and best self. We go within to connect with that which roots and grounds us. We reach out to fellow congregants, newcomers, and those who are unknown to us to see and feel and know our connection as members of the human family. We reach out to experience our interconnection, our interdependence, or as Alan Gold called it this morning, our intersupportive relationships, and to know the joy of fellowship. We gather in community to be reminded that we are not alone in the ridiculous or sublime experiences of human life. And we reach upward towards something greater than ourselves, toward the spirit of creation, to the spirit of life. We stretch ourselves upward, not because we are lesser than or subordinate to, but because more often than not in life, we play it too small. We slump down into our ruts and routines. In the religious community, we urge one another to rise up to our full height and our highest aspirations, to be all that we actually already are. And we return to this ever-changing and liberating worshiping community week after week to be reminded of all of this, to be encouraged in carrying on with these tasks, and to continue in our weaving of the web that supports 
and holds and catches us when we take leaps of faith. The questions that we posed earlier in our service are haunting ones. What are the invisible strands that hold us together, and what is our web for? At a meeting last week, a longtime member said to me, I've never heard a minister preach about what it means to be a UU congregation. I was a little astounded, because I figured that's all I preach about, but maybe not. So there's a chance to address this question more directly, perhaps. And the inner image of the interdependent web gives us a starting place. At the same meeting, another member was describing a conversation about what had originally drawn them to UUCSR. It turns out that in most cases, it hinged on the matter of choice. For most of them, this wasn't a religion they were born into or that was imposed upon them. Rather, it was a religion they chose for themselves. And even if they were born a Unitarian or Unitarian Universalist, they still reached a point as youth or young adults where they had to renew that choice for themselves. Unitarian Universalism is a chosen faith. And why did they choose that faith? Why do we choose this faith? Because it offers wide freedom to explore our beliefs. It lifts up wisdom from the world's religions and invites us to decide what makes sense to us. What resonates with our own experience? Because it puts us in proximity to a bunch of people who value freedom to choose and question as much as all of us do. People who are somehow open to differing ideas and ways of looking at the world. Because it offers religious teaching for our children that cultivates their own curiosity and freedom to ask questions about the mysteries that surround us because it puts us in touch with people committed to making this world a better place for all people and ultimately all living things. Because it gives us a chance to forge our own web of relationships with people who care about us and our families when they're thriving and when they're suffering, when they're joyful and when we're grieving. So that's one central purpose of our own interdependent web, to connect us with a community of people who will help us become wiser, more just, and more loving, and companion us along the way from now until death, and perhaps beyond. So it is the energy, the force, the nature of the strands that connect us to one another in this web. It's easy to think it's one thing when it's probably really another. It's tempting to think that it's agreement. Because we are like-minded, we think alike. And while that may be true for some issues, or true on the surface of things, it's clearly not the case, as is evident at any congregational meeting or table discussions at UU Cafe. We have a much wider array of beliefs and ways of looking at the world than we realize. It's tempting to think that it's having lots of experiences in common, which is surely true for different subgroups within the congregation, those who grew up Catholic or Jewish or even UU or in working class or white collar neighborhoods or with conservative or progressive parents or with two parents or one parent or no parent. Yet that's clearly not the case when you realize that we have members and friends with all of these different backgrounds in the congregation. It's tempting to think that it's affirmation of the same principles, those iconic seven principles that sometimes seem almost like a creed to us. Yet I suspect that the variety of different ways in which we understand and interpret one or more of our principles may put quickly put us at odds with one another. What does it mean to affirm justice, equity, and compassion in human relations or the right of conscience in the current political context? No, I think the energy that keeps us together is more primal. That's one reason it's hard to find words that adequately describe or evoke it. I think the force that energizes the web that is our congregation is mutual respect. 
is wanting what's best for the other as well as myself, is caring about the other and ultimately wishing them well. In short, the force that energizes our web is a kind of love that's hard to comprehend and even harder to practice. Without that love, the web will come unraveled. With that love, the web will never unravel. The challenge for each of us and all of us is making this dynamic web real, here and now. So this year, let's keep on weaving together, this congregational year and always. So may it be, shalom, blessed be, insha'Allah, aho, shanti, amen. In this spirit, let us join together in singing hymn number 360. Here we have gathered, and as the spirit allows, let us rise as we sing this together. be seated. And before we have our closing words, we are enjoying here homecoming on one of the most beautiful days of the year. And I would be remiss if I did not invite us all to hold in our hearts and in our prayers and in our minds those in our country who are not so blessed, uh, particularly those in the path of the hurricane who have, uh, are contending with and will continue in this week to contend with some very catastrophic uh, issues within their own lives. And I encourage us all as individuals to be as generous and attentive as we can to doing what we can to lend additional aid and relief to the people in our uh, south um, west, uh, southeastern uh, coastline. Gloria, the tenacity of earth and its creatures. Kyrie eleison, these children who will go on to save what we cannot. Baruch Ata Adonai, the ordinary tenacity of plants and of people. Om, the center of the universe which is everywhere, not the least place in the human heart. Alleluia, love that survives anger and winter 
and despair and sorrow and even death. Shalom, love that persists. Namio renge quo, calm that is the seed in the dark. Amen. For endings that are beginnings, for beginnings that are endings. Alleluia. For the circle, the spiral, the web, the egg, the orbit, the center, the seed, the flower, the fruit, the opening, the death, the release, the seed. Amen. We are going on. Amen. It is going on. Amen. Blessed be.